بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره نستعين به جل وعلا ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ به سبحانه وتعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا عباد الله أنصحكم ونفسي الآثمة بتقوى الله أحثكم وإياها على طاعته أحذركم وإياها وبال مخالفته ومعصيته أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له سبحانه وتعالى قديم بلا ابتداء دائم بلا انتهاء لا يفنى ولا يبيد ولا يكون إلا ما يريد لا تبلغه الأوهام ولا تدركه الأفهام ولا يشبه الأنام حي لا يموت قيوم لا ينام ذلك بأنه على كل شيء قدير وكل شيء إليه فقير وكل أمر عليه يسير لا يحتاج إلى شيء ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا ونبينا وقرة أعيننا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف بإذن ربه الغمة وعبد الله حتى أتاه اليقين صل اللهم وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي الأمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وارض اللهم عن صحابته الغر الميامين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في المحكم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر The ayat are known to all of you from Surah Al-Asr and uh, the characteristics of the Quran as you all know and we've talked about that many times before that Al-Quran oftentimes or most times gives us things in a very simple form not too complex and that's a simplicity is a sign of greatness huh what does that mean and sometimes you open up a book Nietzsche Kafka philosophers known and it takes you three hours to read three lines and you repeat them again and you still don't understand anything and oftentimes there's a confusion in people where they valued or where they put value on things that they do not understand as higher than things that they understand. Al-Quran Al-Kareem comes as a challenge where it gives you in a very simple form extremely profound and deep concepts and meaning. So it turns that the greatness among the greatness of Allah, Nabi Al-A'zam Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam is that he was given Jawami Al-Kalim yani what does that mean Jawami Al-Kalim he says a couple of things that have so many meanings that give you basically the track in life and if you walk on that track you will land in safety among these things Surah Al-Asr Allah says, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Human being is actually at a loss or will be losing إِلَّا أَدَاتُ اسْتِثْنَاءُ وَحَصْرِ There is exception and there is limitation, linguistically speaking. إِلَّا except. So number one, we're exceptionalizing a group of people and then we're limiting this to those group. Who are they, Ya Allah? الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا In the past few hundred years, the Ummah has been suffering from something called irja. In a sense, I'm not saying that the whole Ummah is like that, no. But it's a practical irja, not a aqeed, not, not, not a, 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 a faith kind of irja. Lano Ahlul Sunnah, alhamdulillah, do not believe in irja. Lakin, what does that mean, irja? It means separating belief from practice. 
What does that mean? You see that in many other faith systems, without making names, or everybody knows. All you have to do is say this and everything is gone. Forgiven. Oh, so what has been happening here, and, and many other people say that all you have to do, hatta fil Islam, even some people they say that they tell you all, just as long as you keep your la ilaha illallah, nothing hurts you. Now, nah? well, actually, a whole sect came under that in the old days, and they actually went under this banner as long as you say la ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah, uh, you're okay, you do whatever you have, you do, there's no problem, and you're good. La. That's a separation of what? Faith, articles of faith that are theoretical in your mind, and then the translation of those articles with your deeds, with your words, and with your belief. Why? Because people commit blasphemy with their belief as well. I mean, with their heart, not necessarily with their mouth, not necessarily with their hands. And the problem with that is when people say it is enough for me to say testify only with my tongue La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and that is not followed by deeds that confirm what you have testified. The separation between practice and belief. Therefore Al-Quran Karim did not stop here. Notice Al-Quran Karim, what does it say? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wal-Asr Inna al-Insana lafi khusr illa except al Amanu. Only Amanu? La. Allah did not stop here. It said, Wa'amilu salihat. Iman must be followed by Amal. Otherwise, it does not confirm. Therefore, now we see some people, for example, Hatta Salah. And we talked about that before. As Salah, they pray. Allahu Akbar, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah, etc. And all these things five times on time. Lakin their Salah does not stop them from committing evil does not stop them from saying wrong, that not, does not stop them from transgressing upon other people's right, does not stop them from lying, does not stop them from cheating, does not stop them from deceiving, does not stop them from doing injustice to people. Now we understand how Nabi Al-Azam when he says huh, that whose salah does not prevent him. The objective, there's objective there. Now we're coming to the Siyam. And the Nabi says, Man lam zur wal amala bih. Allah subhanahu wa those of those people who do not abandon making forgeries and lies in their sea when, when they're fasting. And then the Nabi says, Allah is not in need of them abandoning their food and drinks. The point of Siyam and the point of Salah and the point of Zakah خُذْ مِنَ مُعْلِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرْهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ There is purification, there is elevation, all these things. Al-Hajj, the same thing. Al-Islam wants us to understand that Naam, you must pray. Naam, you must do your Siyam, your fasting. You have to do your Zakah, you have to do your Hajj. But all these things have an objective among the objective is that you become a better person. That you are today better than you were yesterday. That you treat people today better than you treated them yesterday. That you treat yourself today. And I don't mean by treating yourself like the terminological sense that you go and splurge. Go ahead and splurge if that's what you like. But you treat yourself, you don't do injustice to yourself. You don't do injustice to others. That's how you treat yourself better than you treated yourself yesterday. If yesterday you prayed, and rushed, today you take your time. If yesterday you made a mistake talking to people differently, today you make things different. If yesterday you abandoned one sunnah, today you apply that sunnah. The thing, the whole point is that you are walking in a gradual and the effect of your belief that you must, you, we believe you must pray, we believe you have to fast. These things then are translated in tangible effects on you every single day, testifying that you testify la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Economic soul Islam, yani al-akhlaq, the morality in Islam, cannot be separated from the faith, hatta in economics. Yani in economics, you all know, those of you who take economics, you have a few things in economics. Number one, production. Then you have dealing, then you have distribute trading, or dealing, distribution, and then consumption. Economics. Even Islam interferes in economics in a sense in what? In a sense tells the Muslim who is dealing in economy. A Muslim who is producing. Naam, Islam gave you all the freedom, produce. 
لكن you cannot produce things that are harmful. There are ethics in production. Huh? Al-Islam did not tell people go and produce uh, uh, opium or go, go and produce these things. لا, لا, you cannot. There is ethics even in production. Even in that economics, when you trade, Al-Islam allowed you to trade. Do whatever you have to do. Like and remember, there are ethics in trading. You do not trade, for example, يعني حتى Islam al-Fuqaha mentioned among the things, uh, you may sell, you know, somebody has a store that sells uh, things for the household. You sell knives. But if you know that this person will take this knife and do some harm with it, it is haram for you to sell that person a knife. There's a responsibility even as a salesperson. You know, you know this person is going to go and harm someone. He's going to go and commit a crime. There is a responsibility here. And Islam does not want us to be passive. That's not the whole point. And Islam wants you to be active. Then Allah says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا Only amal, only deeds. La, what kind of deed? The deed is not simply left. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا La. What kind of deed? الصالحات. They have to do good deeds. The deeds have to be good and pious. And trust me, everyone has in a, a sort of a measure, in a sense, relative measure in their hearts. They know what's right. They know what's wrong. In uh, more than that, in distribution, you cannot distribute things that are prevented, that are illegal, that are this. You, there's a responsibility, even in consumption. In economics, the Islam says, Naam, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Kulu, Washrabu, eat and drink. Go ahead, enjoy yourself. Lakin, Wala tusrifu. Kulu, Washrabu, Wala tusrifu. Eat and drink, but don't waste food. Go eat, go drink, do these things. Lack and don't waste, because waste is israf. And in Allah la yuhibbu al-musrifin. Allah does not like those who excessively spend and waste in the sense, excessively spend in the sense of wasting. Even in politics, and we don't talk about politics here because the sense of politics is basically the politics of the human being within themselves. And that's the whole point. But even in politics, Islam wants, wants us there's two relations, the relations, inner relation and outer relation. And Islam talks to those people who are in charge. In the, polit in the political arena, in the administrations, in the governments, in whatever they are. It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa'idha wa'addu al-amat ila ahliha. Addu al-amat, give the amana to its people. Wa'idha hakamtum bayna al-nas. An tahkumu bil-adl. Allah, the meaning of the ayah, Allah orders you to give the amana back to its people. And if you are judging amongst people, that you judge with justice. Well, somebody says, what do you mean give the amana back to people? What does this have to do with a, someone who is a, in an administration or in a government or in any management level? Very simple that you treat people based on amana, based on the covenant that you've signed, based on the things that you have already pledged that you're going to do, based on the honesty and the decency, not that you bring your own people, not that you let those people who you know let go pass by and those you don't not pass by. There's no double standard in things. Everything is equal and everything is transparent and everything is just. I want to rec bring us, bring our, to our recollection what Umar ta'ala anhu said. The second righteous Khalifa, Rudanullahi Ali. Law anna baghla, had, is if a mule, not a human being, where, where was Umar anhu based? Fil Madina Munawwara. What is he saying? Look at this. The sense of justice and amana. If a mule, a donkey, slips and falls in Iraq, Allah would ask me about it. Why haven't you prepared the road for that mule, Ya Umar? We're not talking about human beings. We're talking about a mule between a horse and a donkey. If it's 
slips, slips, not if it dies, not if it's hurt, not if it's, not if someone hurts it. No, 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 no. If it slips by itself because the road is not repaired, Umar radiallahu anhu says that I am accountable in the day of judgment. Allah will ask me, why haven't you repaired the road for that mule, ya Umar? Because we need to heighten our level of understanding and responsibility. To understand what it means to be a Muslim. It doesn't mean to be passive. It means positive contribution, not only to yourself and the well-being of your family and the well-being of your community and the well-being of your country, but the well-being of the whole world as a whole, including humans and non-humans and animals and plants, even the stars in the skies. You are to be a mercy to them, for you are an extension of Muhammad and Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. There is another thing that al-akhlaq in Islam makes us go, cleanness. We talked about our relation now with others. Clean, decent in, the, in your appearance. As much as you can. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Khulu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. Al-Quran says and orders, take your zina, look good whenever you come to the prayer, whenever you come to the masjid. Look good. In order to be clean, in order to be pure, in order to wash yourself, it is amazing that when we wash our faces five times a day, some people don't even wash their hearts one time a day. The point about khudu zinatakum, that you take your zina, that you take your ornaments, that you take your beautiful appearance before you pray, is not only to clean yourself on the outer side, but to clean yourself on the inner side. Not only to wash your face five times a day, but to wash your heart five times a day. To clean your body five times a day, but to clean your heart also five times a day. Often people, they clean their, body, they clean their bodies, they do wudu five times a day, but they leave their hearts uncleaned for years. And that's among the meaning of coming to the prayer. When you come to the prayer, if you see the clothes that are dirty or something, if you can't change, change. Look good for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the people, this is the sign of the Muslim. Cleanness. And you look at the Muslims, you see them clean. Clean in their bodies, subhanallah. Clean in their clothing. Clean in their hearts. Clean in their tongues. Clean with their hands, clean with their eyes, clean with their ears. Those are the signs of a Muslim. There are things, there's a hadith, let me talk about this hadith of a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And this hadith is beautiful and among the hadith and all the hadith are like that. But this hadith summarizes, we remember we started talking about how uh, Few things said mean so much. Here's the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we all need this hadith for the medication of Muhammadun Rasulullah that is given to people has no side effects that are bad. It, is, it comes straight from the pharmacy of Muhammadun Rasulullah and that pharmacy is all good. It asks no return. And it's only good for us. He says this hadith Rawat Tirmidhi. Imam Tirmidhi narrated this hadith. He says, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ittaqi Allah haythu ma kunt. Look at these. Hadith gives us three rules. Three rules. And if we take these little notices that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives us, look at how life changes entirely. Number one, Ittaqi Allah haythu ma kunt. Have taqwa of Allah wherever you are. You go here, have taqwa Allah, of Allah. You go, you move from one city to another city, have taqwa of Allah. You move from one country to another country, have taqwa of Allah. Allah is the one who, is, who charges you. If you steal in such and such country, He is also the same one who is going to charge you if you steal in this country. Lying in different countries are the same. Doesn't change based on geographical location. Your GPS is known to Allah Rabbul Alameen. Now people come with GPS and wherever you go, there is a, that follows you. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن كنا نستنسخ ما كنتم تعملون القرآن mentions that الملاء الله says we copy the meaning of the ayah we copy everything you do now, now, now people say this is possible, but 1400 years ago, who can say it's possible to copy every single thing that a human being says? Now, wherever you are, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sahal bin Abdullah Tushtari, rahimahullah, and I'll mention this for you real quick. When he was five, six years old, he was playing around with, with his teacher and the kids. Yani nursery or kindergarten. The teacher now they want to play hide and seek. He says to them, go everyone hide someone where nobody can see you. All the children, they run, one hides under the tree, one hides over the tree, one finds a cow, one finds a camel, hides behind, etc. Illa Sahel, except Sahel. He doesn't go anywhere. And the teacher tells him, didn't I tell you go hide? He says, yes, but you told me to go hide somewhere where no one sees me, and anywhere I go and hide, Allah sees me. Number one, the, the prophetic advice, the prophetic medication for the soul. Number one. Number two, Look at this beautiful thing. Because Islam is realistic. What does that mean realistic? Yani Islam does not expect you to be an angel walking on earth. We, don't, we know that a human being, everyone, son of Adam, is, makes mistakes. The best of sinners are what? Those who repent. So Islam expects you to do mistakes. Lakin, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, al Hasana." If you do a mistake, immediately follow the mistake by a good deed. So it can erase it. Follow it by a good deed. Repent and change what you have done. Do something good in return so it can erase what you have done. And we always do things that are wrong. Every single day we all do. We're all sinners. Therefore, we take from this that we ought to remember when we do things throughout the day. And even if we don't remember how many things we do, we ought to do good. Do good like this. Do good. In the old days, the Arabs, there's a little uh, uh, layman saying, if you were to say, they say, which means do good and throw it in the ocean. As they say, which is layman, really not, not standard Arabic. Which means do good and don't, don't ask for a return. Throw it. One of our shuyukh, Rahmatullahi Alayhi Blaza, used to say, do good and don't expect a return. For if you have done good to those, to others who are worthy of your good, then they are worthy of your good. And if you have done good to those who are not worthy of your good, then you are worthy of doing good. You do good either way. With people who are worthy of receiving your good, and those who are not worthy in your opinion of receiving good. Why? Because if they are worthy, then that's good. Because al ma'ruf la fi ahli. If you do something good and good people, it's never lost. <coughs> Never lost. But if you do good to those who are not worthy of it, in your opinion, then you are worthy of doing good anyway. And then, hasan. The last thing the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives us is, when you are with people, have good akhlaq. Good akhlaq. When you are talking to people, when you are living with people, khuluqun hasan is what you're supposed to have. Khuluq Hasan means good morality, good akhlaq. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Alhamdulillahi hamdan kathiran kama amar wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lahu irghaman liman jahada bihi wa kafar wa ashadu anna sayyidana muhammadan sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam khatam al anbiya al-mu'taba sallallahumma wa sallam wa barak ala hadha nabiyyi wa ala alih ahli al-fiqhi wa al-nadar wa al-ilmi wa al-athar wa ala man bi atharihi muqtafa wa a'tabar Number one, the prophetic advice 
Number one, have taqwa of Allah wherever you are. Day, night, this country, that country, this situation, that situation, taqwa of Allah. Number two, when you do something bad, follow it immediately by something good so it can erase it. Number three, wherever you are, be a light, a light of good akhlaq. Good akhlaq. Often people struggle with this word because they say, you know, what is good akhlaq? Look at the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And when Allah praises an Nabi al-A'zam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does he say? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa inna ka la'ala khuluqin azim. Al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, Imam Shafi'i has a nice poetry. He says, lisanuka, basically it summarizes akhlaq. Lisanuka la tadkur bihi awrat amri'in. Fakulluka awrat wa linnasi al-sun. Your tongue should not mention the imperfections of others. Imam Shafi'i is saying. Why? He says because you are filled with imperfections. And others have tongues as well. وَعِينُكَ إِنْ أَبْدَتْ إِلَيْكَ مَعَايِبًا صُنْهَا وَقُلْ يَا عِينٌ لِلنَّاسِ أَعْيُنُهُ And if your eyes, if your eye shows you faults in other people, shut your eye. And tell you, your eye, oh I, others also have eyes, and I am filled with faults. وَعَاشِرْ بِمَعْرُوفٍ When you live with people, live with them in good, ma'roof, in good. وَسَامِحْ مَنْ يَعْتَدَى And forgive those who transgress. وَفَارِقْ And if it doesn't work, all these things that don't work, then abandon people. وَلَكَنْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ but when you abandon, even you're abandoning people in good ways. When you leave people because it's impossible to, to, to do things with them, to treat, to, to, to deal with them, then do it in a nice way, even abandoning in a nice way. There are 10, ten things that we mentioned, few, few of them, that talk about akhlaq. Number one, what makes us have husn al-khulaq is not to disregard little sins. Little sins, little sins, little sins. Why are they so important? Because little sins accumulate. And then the heart gets very rough. Al Hassan was asked. A man came to Al Hassan and he said, He says, Ya Imam, I really love to do Qiyam al Layl. Lakin, I never can wake up. I really like it. I want to do it, but I never wake up. He told him, Your sins shackled you. You want to, like in your sins, I'm not letting you. Let go of your sins so you can do it. Number two, your heart must be clean with people. You all know the Sahabi, we don't have much time to talk about it. But when the Sahabi, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, How come you are already in Jannah? I've seen you already in Jannah. He says, Ya Rasulullah, when I put my head on the pillow, I don't have in my heart anything against anybody. My heart is clean. Number three, Salatul Layl, the praying at night. Praying at night is very important, even if two rak'ah. Make yourself habitual, have a habit to pray at night, even for two rak'ah, and then sleep. <coughs> because Salatul Layl is very, very important. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the Hadith of Muslim, that if I have the best of Salah after the Fard is Salatul Layl. And in the Sahih Imam, which is Hadith Sahih, Imam Sayyid narrated in others, Ni'ma al-Rajul Abdullah, law kana yusalli bil-layl. When he was asked about Abdullah ibn Umar, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, he, would, he is a good man if he prays at night. Other things, being just, being just to yourself, being just to others, being patient. Why being patient? Because patient makes you, elevates you. And the fourth, or other, after that, being merciful. What I mean by being merciful is being forgiving and merciful. Look, we all do mistakes, and we want Allah to forgive us. If you want to be forgiven, practice forgiving. If you want to Allah, for Allah to forgive you, you have to forgive others. Man la yarham, la yarham. The hadith is authentic. Who is not merciful upon others, Allah is not merciful upon him. Be merciful. And I'll finish with this. Don't let the dunya be your entire concern. Don't let the dunya be everything that you are in. 
Remember that there is something other than tangibles. There are intangibles. There is spirituality. Let things other than the box that we live in of dollars and cents limit your life. Remember I talked to you about Rumi, Jaladdin Rumi rahimahullah. And you know he was a big scholar and I finished with this event to show you that the, the dunya is not worth anything. Actually, Imam Muslim narrates in his Sahih, look at this event. Where a Nabi وسلم, was walking with the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and they passed by Jidi Mayyit. Yani, a small cow or a, 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 a sheep that is dead on the street. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells his sahaba radiallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Who would like to have this for a dirham? One, one dollar. Sahaba radiallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ya Rasulullah, we would like to have it even for nothing. And even if you give it to me for free, I don't want it. Who wants, who wants to have a dead, dead sheep? Huh? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell, told them, Fawallah, by Allah, a dunya, the whole dunya is less significant to Allah than this dead sheep is significant to you. Insignificant, even less than. This is less, you won't even get it for free. It's even less than that to Allah. The whole dunya, the whole, everything in the dunya. Notice them. A Rumi went to, Tur to Turkey and the Sultan saw him. Big scholar, pious, adhkar, ilm, etc. So he wanted, to, the Rumi, you know, the ulama usually are poor. Usually, not everybody is poor, like mostly not poor. Especially those days. And Sultan, he said, I want to give you a gift to a Rumi. After he heard he was such a big man. What is the gift? He says, this, I'm going to give you a big palace of mine. I used to live in that palace. The whole palace with the maids, with the servants, with the uh, supply, daily supply of fruits and everything. The whole big palace is for you. You take it. A Rumi did something, yeah, millions. And he went to that palace. He looked at the palace. Lived in that palace, maids, rivers, trees, fruits, all kinds of food. In the old days, he would dream of a piece of bread with onion. Now he's having chickens and lambs and huh, whole things coming to him. One time a poor man knocked, beggar knocked on the door of that palace. The servants opened the door. He says, where is the owner of the, of the, of the palace? They said, wait a minute, he's coming. Al Imam al-Rumi, Jalad al-Rumi is coming. He says, what do you want? He says, I'm a beggar. Do you have some food for me that you can give me? Whatever is left over, I will take. Al-Rumi looked at him, at the beggar, and he said, come in. He brought him in the palace. And then he says, let me take my books. Wassalamu alaikum. For this palace now, I give it all to you. This is yours. A dunya is like this. He gave him the palace and walked away. Because when he was away, and he, had one, well, he was just looking for bread, and he was looking for an onion and little things to eat, he felt more free. He felt more spiritual. He felt closer to Allah. What is a palace then in the dunya that will go away after a few years where you have an everlasting Jannah fil akhirah? He left the palace and he walked away. You are a beggar, you want a piece of food? Take the whole palace and the whole food in it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding of the sunnah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Barak ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma ansur al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. أعلي يا مولانا كلمة الحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إليه من أراد بهم غير ذلك فاجعل دائرة السوي عليه اللهم رد المسلمين إلى دينك ردا جميلا آتي أنفسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اشف اللهم مرضانا وعاف مبتلانا وفك أسرانا وارحم موتانا اغفر اللهم لنا ولآبائنا ولمشايخنا ولمن له حق علينا ولمن على الخير أعاننا وعن الشر أبعدنا ولمن أوصانا بالدعاء 